Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro, and we're going to be doing a video today on Affinity Designer. So we're going to start with a basic line, and we're going to recreate that line using the pen tool with P. You can see the shortcuts above in blue. So if we click in the middle, we need to switch to the node tool, which is N. We're going to grab that point, pull it down, pull it up. And if we want to break it, then we're going to have to choose break curve. And that's going to separate this into two segments. Now the tricky part is trying to connect these back together. So if we click here, you're going to see the blue. And we click out. We can click out, but we can't click from one to the next while they're both selected. So here we have them both selected. We're going to try and click again, but we need to switch to the selection tool. And with the selection tool, we're going to select both lines and make sure that the nodes are connected and we're going to come up here and we're going to choose Join Curves. So you'll see now that if I use the node tool and I grab that point move it back and forth at both sides of the line move connected. So I'm going to go from here to there. We're going to detach the pen line with Control and click. And now we're going to select this line, turn this blue, and then click down right here to this point. Now, since we're closing, this shape is allowing us to click through. So here, you look, and it looks like they're connected, but you grab it and you pull it out, and you notice it's not connected. So we need to do the same thing. We need to use the selection tool, make sure all the segments are selected, and then drag over this joint. Now you see that when we use the node tool and pull on it, that both points are moving together. All right, so let's fill it, and let's go on to the next example. <laughs> All right, it's time for our riddle. All right, Sky, do you have a riddle for us? Yeah. Okay. What has a head and a tail but no body? It's not a snake. All right, so now we're going to select this rectangle, and we're going to come over here and adjust the stroke up and down, and we can do this in a couple different locations, which... In Affinity Designer, it seems like most things have a few different spots where you can adjust them. So we're going to try to adjust the stroke size by hitting 2, but you'll notice this did something funky, and I want to demonstrate this so that you guys can understand how to fix this if you have the same problem. We're going to go up here, and we're looking, okay, two points. That's not where the problem is. Uh, look at the uh, stroke color, the opacity slider, not where the problem is. What happened here is the layer dropped to 20% when we hit the number 2. So here we're going to go to the selection tool. And with the selection tool, we are going to go ahead and click on this line and then come over here. That's going to highlight it in the layers panel. And then we're going to drag on opacity to bring that all the way back up to 100%. All right, so we got that fixed. Let's go ahead and adjust the colors. Now, if you're seeing just grays, which is what shows by default, just go over here, use the drop down, select colors, and you should be able to see that a lot easier. All right, now to pick the color, we can do uh, a, just an eyedropper grab. So you're gonna grab from the circle, the color next to the eyedropper, you're gonna drag onto the color you're trying to copy. You can do that from both locations here. And then from there, with the rectangle selected, you're just going to tap on Recents or the color itself, and that will fill in that rectangle. All right, so this tool I think is really cool. I haven't seen this in a lot of other programs, uh, not that it doesn't exist. It's called the Curve Tool. Hit C. Looks like that little guy right there. And then you drag in from a point, and it rounds, it curves, and smooths out that line. So if you have some funky-looking lines, this is a really good way to smooth them out. Now, in order to make this a perfect semicircle, there's a lot of better ways to do this, but this gives a good example of what this looks like. You can use the node tool, move those points around, adjust them as you see fit, and it works uh, really well in a lot of situations that would have been otherwise harder without this tool. I think it's a very nice addition. All right, so let's move on to our next example. We're going to look at, at clipping and dividing and subtracting different shapes. So this rectangle here uh, that we drag out from here, which again, that's the shortcut's M, 
it's a very different style than the one that's on on the bottom so we're going to go up here we're going to select styles and we're going to go to the upper right hand corner and choose add style from selection and with this selected uh, you'll notice that it immediately populates a new style right here if we click on that with our other style of rectangle selected it's going to copy that style right away okay so we're going to shift select both and come up here and hit subtract so not too hard and let's use the curve tool right here and we're going to drag in and just show you how much easier that is than fiddling with the uh, arms that come out from the the node adjusting one arm and then the other one and trying to get this nice smooth curve very easy to use all right for our next example we're looking at how to make a donut and affinity designer calls them donuts i don't know if that's an industry industry-wide um, term but it, it makes me laugh a little bit each time all right so let's adjust the stroke a little more pleasant stroke and then let's go ahead and drag a second circle on top of the first uh, actually this, we're just going to hit the selection tool we're going to click alt and we're going to drag out from this one to create a duplicate and let's put it back in using the snapping tools so it aligns really nicely. We're gonna use Control and Shift at the same time after reselecting the top circle. Control and Shift and drag in. This is going to scale from center. With Shift still selected, we're going to select both front and back and then click Subtract. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Not too hard, uh, but there's a much better way of doing that that allows you to do a variety of other quick adjustments so we're going to drag out using the donut tool and there's little red dots right here we're going to pull in and this does a really cool uh, I don't know what you call that but a notch cut out of a, of, of a donut um, but very easy to use and you just make sure that if you're trying to adjust it you don't see those red dots that you're selecting the node tool and not the node tool the um, the donut tool in order to do that all right so this is the cog tool um, cog is fine i would call it a gear but that's okay so we're going to control shift and drag out to scale it from center and also make it a perfect circle and now with the node tool selected we're not going to get these so we have to select again the cog tool and that's going to give us these little red dots and we can adjust all sorts of parameters in order to make this the type of cog that <laughs> we want it to be. A plumpy one or a pointy one, or one with lots of different arms or teeth as they call them. And uh, that gives us a lot of control over adjusting that. However, it doesn't give us full control. If we want full control of all the different points, we have to uh, do something called convert to curves and that's up here in the edit menu um, the edit menu the shortcut for this is uh, control plus return which is control plus enter and so we're gonna hit control uh, we need to make sure that we select it first so we'll go selection tool and then control plus enter and boom just like that we have all these controllable nodes and they're a little bit rounded and i'm not sure why they're rounded but they're rounded and so if you want to make those sharp again just alt click right on the node itself let's see what the answer is to today's video riddle A coin. Can you say bye bye? Bye. Say bye bye. Bye. Say bye bye. 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 All right. So let's go ahead and looking uh, look at uh, gradient fills. So we're going to select this item right here, and let's go ahead and make our own copy. So we're going to select it with the selection tool, and we're going to drag out a copy, and this copy is the one we're going to turn into a beautiful work of art. All right, may not be beautiful, but <laughs> it will be gradiented. Okay, so uh, we click up here in, in the fill, and then we choose the gradient property. 
Okay, we want to let's go ahead and grab this little guy in the middle. And in order to do that, we're going to need to probably go to the layers and grab him. All right, and there he is. So we're going to apply a style uh, right over, let's see, reverse it. We don't want to reverse it. Uh, we're going to click the style. All right, a rainbow and hit the gradient tool, which is that little rainbow. It looks very much like the rainbow fill. And you have all of these cool uh, adjustment properties uh, ways that you can you can tweak and adjust the way that it 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 uh, fills uh, where the different pot spots are and you can just all you have to do is just click and drag you can add different points and adjust the color of those different points uh, very very powerful you can do the same thing with the stroke although I don't know how to do some of the advanced um, features of the gradient fill with the stroke tool so if someone as familiar with how to do that, please let us know in the comments how do you do advanced fill on a stroke. All right, so you can just click on these, click on the color, change the color, click on the other color and change the color. Uh, very easy to, to very quickly change these. All right, let's move on to our next example and that is down here and we're going to choose uh, we're going to learn how to do a lining and uh, also merging of shapes and cutting of shapes so we're going to take this first little yellow rectangle and we're going to subtract all right but we don't want to do that so let's go ahead and align him first to make sure he's in the right spot so we're going to choose the selection tool and select both objects and then use the align horizontal to move it left and right and center and then top corner and center and put them all the way back here at the top. All right, now let's go ahead and play with these tools up here. So the first one, we are adding the shapes, then subtracting the shape, and then only the shapes that cross paths, and then we're going to combine the shapes and subtract the part that is overlapping. All right, you guys, I hope that helps. Uh, these are a lot of the things that I wanted to know how to do myself for watching and please subscribe to this video thanks